everybody. We're sitting out here in the garden today on a hot and humid day where the wind is coming at a fairly steady breeze and storms are in the forecast. It seems like a good time to do the recap for our previous week in our permaculture design course, Climate. We talked about the broad climate zones and how they range from temperate to tropical and also dry lands. We talked about how in the temperate area it's humid but also cool to cold. How it ranges all the way from the polar regions to being cold, cool, warm, and Mediterranean. How that one of the predominant characteristics of the temperate region is that we have winter rain and summer dry. From the Mediterranean subclimate, we can almost transition into the tropical climate. Here, it's humid. We have the subtropics, which are just outside of the vertical path of the sun, or Cancer and Capricorn latitudes. We have the wet and dry tropics, the wet tropics, and the equatorial tropics, where, because of their location, they actually have two rainy seasons. Then we also have the dry tropics. One major difference between the tropics and the temperate is that our wet and dry seasons are reversed. Here in the tropics, we're going to have a rainy summer and a dry winter. Next, we can transition from our dry tropics into dry lands. Dry lands mostly have high evaporation, though there are areas where that's not the case but can range everywhere from cold climates to the hot tropical areas. We spent a good deal of time discussing the orographic effects on climate. We talked about how altitude can affect climate and how it generally 100 meters change in altitude is equivalent to one latitude in change either away or towards the equator. As we go up in elevation, we move away from the equator and as we go down in elevation, it is similar to moving closer to the equator. We spoke about the maritime effect and how the closer we are to the ocean, the more regulated the temperature is. There's less annual temperature change and it acts as a moderator to the climate. We talked about the continental effect and how there is an extreme temperature change throughout a year. How there are very cold winters and very hot summers. We spoke about rain shadow and how large-scale landscape can affect rainfall. I remember seeing this when we lived on the eastern side of the Rocky Mountains right near Denver, Colorado, and seeing how terribly difficult it was for the meteorologists to try to do their best to predict what was actually going to happen. And sure or not, it would rain when they didn't think that it would, and it would be dry when they thought it would rain more so than in any other location I've ever lived. We also spoke about microclimate, and microclimate is one of those things I really want to learn about because we're just in that awkward area between certain climates where if I was just a little further toward the equator, I'd have some more options open to me without question. But I think that if I can incorporate microclimates and I have the landscape where I believe that that's possible, that I can try to retain some of that heat and bring in some more heat when I need it, where we can try to make those microclimate situations and have all the elements we'd really like to see on our property. We also spoke about the characteristics of these major climate zones, which included things like how much biodiversity is above the ground or below the ground, depending on which zone we're in, and how that relates to our ability to design certain elements and features into a particular site. How in the temperate area, there's a specific start and stop point for certain cycles, because we have times where we freeze and times where we warm up because of the change in amount of light that we receive but how it's a constant cycle, very little slowing down even in the tropical regions, and how because of that, certain elements that we might do in a temperate area will not work in a tropic, and vice versa. We also spoke about how in dry lands, we have very special considerations 
about water because we really need to keep a hold of that resource while also not over exploiting it and doing more harm than we can do good. We also dipped into some minor landscape profiles. Minor in the sense that they are not as widespread. But when you think of something like volcanic, you might not be thinking that it's a very minor thing. We also spoke about high islands, low islands, flatlands, wetlands, coasts and estuaries and how each one of those provides us with a unique opportunity to design in a way where we can realize the benefits of that area and still achieve the goals that we want to have as a human race. How we can supply ourselves with the structure that we need, with the food that we need, and still work with nature in the climate that we're given. I hope that gives you all a bit of insight into what we spoke about with climate and how it affects how we design, not just what kind of plants we're allowed to plant. Next week, we're going to dip into trees. And I'm interested about trees because Jeff has repeatedly said throughout this course that ecosystems major in trees, that they are the epitome, the epitome of an ecosystem. So it'll be neat to see what he has to say about them. A specific week dedicated to trees. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time.